This show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for certain audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. A friendly reminder, Mary Jane edibles are not a substitute for actually paying your Lyft driver. Don't forget to tip your bartenders, you filthy fucking animals. And if you've got kinks, we've got links. Don't forget to subscribe, put on your seatbelt, and enjoy the ride. Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Thespian Talk. I am your host, Goma the Ranting Thespian. With me this week is Michelle. Hello. Skolapendra. Hello. And Ricky. Hey, yo. And it's been a few weeks. Things have happened. Still, I'm still on the grind for, like, any kind of driving job that that gives me what I want, what I need. Um... You know, there's been plenty that have been willing to work with me in terms of scheduling and pay, which is a positive. But then they would look at my record, and despite it being over three years since, like, and and since my my last incident, you know, uh, which is when I ended up rear-ending another semi in Kansas in 2019, which it's been three years and a couple of weeks since then, which is beyond most thresholds. Um, But despite that... Either they'd be like, oh, then you haven't been driving since this time, so we need you to have this experience. It's like, how am I going to get that experience if I'm not able to work for anybody? Mm-hmm. Like, eh 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 I mean, and there are, and obviously I can probably point to at least one local option that might take me back in the week. I don't know. Maybe not. But they would be willing, they probably would be willing to work with me on the way I'm wanting to drive, so no. Plus, I... Yeah. You know, they're good enough, but I don't really see myself going back to a company. <laughs> they're good people, don't get me wrong. Just, you know, nothing against them. It's just, no. It's just not going to work on my end as well. And and I think a good um, uh, employee-employer thing has to have a relationship that works for both ends. You know, you give me the time off and the pay that I require, I'll drive for you as hard as I am able, you know, without, without um, um, burning out. Which I think that's fair, um, but you know, there's but some sometimes that there was one who was like, yeah, we're willing to work with you, but our insurance is a bunch of wusses and don't want to have to cover that because of because incidentally it was because uh, there was a part where my license, well, my like the, the CDL portion of my license was um, it was disqualified for a bit because I didn't have an updated medical card, which you have to have just you know to show that you're fit to be able to drive and everything you know they say hey you know yeah you're 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 good to go because this is these are big ass trucks we're driving you kind of yeah yeah and it's and it's one of those where it's like it's very understandable like you don't want somebody who does pot every day to go drive down the road or anything i mean and, and i say pot um i mean even i i have like cbd gummies that have a little bit of uh of the i call it the off-brand thc because I think marijuana itself has like some THC, but these CBD gummies have like a little bit off, legally distinct yeah. pot gummies, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because I legally got these in Alabama, <coughs> uh, so you know. But but I take one of those and I am out for like a day. I'm mean like a big old ball of nothing, <laughs> like. Hmm. And, and and the first time I had a couple of those out of this particular jar, I took two of them. Mm. I don't know how I functioned, but I managed. <laughs> oh, but yeah. But it's like uh, either either the safety departments are, are, are wusses, the insurance are wusses. And the insurance industry as a whole is are a bunch of wusses anyway, but, you know, I, I say wusses, but they're also greedy fucks. Uh Yep. And and oh, we feel for you, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but hey, in but in lieu of that, there's you know there's always trying to keep the streaming going on a little bit more. Trying to do it Tuesday and Thursday from five to nine Central Time. Uh, this past week I did another uh, Blaster Master Zero speed run, just kind of help get the rust off and everything. Not quite where I wanted to be, but I'm close to where I was, so that's okay. Um. And then I think I mentioned it off mic. I was doing some Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duels on my stream Thursday, and then the night before this uh, on Rosen's pre-birthday stream, 
I did a whole bunch of them with with a, with our friends, and I got my ass kicked all over the place. I have what uh, for this 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 might be a little bit more um um I'll uh, uh word I'm thinking of I cannot think of it. Um, if you're into Yu-Gi-Oh, you'll probably understand this a little bit better. But um, I I I have. I have a deck with like a few different ideal strategies. I mostly have dragons right now, but I'm looking to branch out into other monsters as I get them and 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 craft the cards and all that good shit. But I have as a backup slash fodder, you know, Exodia and cards to be able to draw them into my hand. Uh, if you get all five pieces of Exodia, it's an instant win. I did that once during a duel. And I think I think it was off stream, but I managed to get record the replay. And then on stream, it was kind of hit or miss. There was one guy ended up uh, having deck out because he just spent so many time, so long during one of his turns, just summoning, resummoning, summoning again, summoning, resummoning, and it's like, dude, you're burning through your deck. Like, mm. and then I have then I had a card that you flip it over, you know, you discard your entire hand and you draw five new cards. There's another five gone from his deck. And then a couple of turns later, he can't draw. <laughs> it's like, you played yourself. <laughs> uh, it's like, god damn. And it's, it's definitely definitely very different from when I used to do it. Um, back, oh god, was it mid-2000s? Shit. Mm. Uh, but it's good to know that some of the some of the stuff I can adapt to. So yeah, That's always good. Uh but I have what is called what I'm calling the Nagito Komaeda luck. In when it's good, it's very good. When it's bad, it's very bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, enough about me, uh, Michelle. How have you been? Uh, not so bad. Just plodding along. Um, did get not a lead on a new job necessarily, but I spoke to my super one well, of my supervisors at my current job because uh, I mentioned before I'm a contract cleaner. I said, if you had like another site, you know, in my hometown, you'd you'd let me know. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, actually, there might be something in April, which would actually be six days, six hours hmm. a day. So like, have a lunch break. Which, as my colleague was like, that must be a big site. Then I need to be there all day. But so I'm willing to work with her and like, if it's, see if it's within walking distance, because if I do that, then I won't have to get up. So I'll be able to drop the other other shifts, like yeah. You know, give them someone else drop those shifts just concentrate on that we're looking at 30 hours working plus the, the lunch break so it's like a seven day seven hour shift plus lunches so technically 35 hours yeah but i should be able to do that five five days a week so 11 till six which means i don't have to go to bed uh yeah i can actually get up when i'm a little more relaxed time you know yeah. and then you know have a weekend back but go. we'll see. It's like it. Um, I haven't seen the site yet. She's not. She can't remember where it is. It's not opening until April. Um, so I'd have to like see if it's like if I'm suited to the site. But uh, yeah. it's a it's a it's a possibility. I've I've said basically I've thrown my name into the hat. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's going on. And uh, when are you? When is this going out? Like, has the recorded version? Uh, well, it usually goes out the day after we we record. So. Ah, so in that case, tomorrow's my birthday, as in Tuesday. Ah. <laughs> nice. See, wait. Okay, so, so wait. It's Saturday, though. No, you're right. <laughs> why did I think? So it, go out why did I think today was Sunday? So your birthday is Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, All as right, we're recording, fine. right? You can cut this bit out. You can cut this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I don't know birthday. why I brain farted. I thought today was Sunday because I think last time we did it, it was Sunday. Huh? And that's my excuse. Last time we recorded, it was Sunday. It's been no, a... we didn't because we decided. No, uh, was it? Because we thought we weren't going to do Sundays. <laughs> I'm also tired. This is this is why I need to change my hours because my sleep pattern is like whoosh. Right. Oh, my, my brain does not function. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it it's my balloon day on Tuesday. There you go. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday for Tuesday, Michelle. Yes. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, and the day will. Happy early birthday. Yes, early yeah. hat birth. And speaking, Yay. speaking of, and speaking of hat birth, the day we're recording this on the 29th is Rosen's birthday. So hat birth to Rosen. 
Oh, happy <laughs> birthday, dude. Uh, I think, I think he's, I think he said he was like 28, 29, something like that. He's, he's baby. Uh, <laughs> oh. Sorry, no, no, sorry. No. I know um, not everyone likes that terminology. It's uh. But yes, sometimes I've, I'm 44 in it, it, this week. I'm allowed to feel old sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be 40 in October. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my body is already starting to prepare me for it because my knee has been acting up. <sighs> I don't know why. That sucks. And Ugh. earlier, my back decided, hey, you know what? You're, you're going to do your normal thing. Get up off the toilet. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So. Yep. Uh, it's not as bad as it could be, but Jeebus, ow. Yeah. Uh, so. When you get spongy going upstairs, it's really annoying. Yeah. Oof. Just. Mm. So anyway, our pain aside, uh, how how you been, Scully? <laughs> been all right. You know, just uh, correct most of most of the time, just been. Um, hanging out on discord and uh you know just doing the war girl thing that everyone's been doing it's pretty it's pretty fun yeah yesterday's was fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so um i'm not gonna reveal the word until we get to the punchline but mm -hmm. uh, essentially i was struggling with yesterday's word i mean scully probably worked that out from looking at my word map but um i i essentially uh, took a brief pawn break and then I was like, oh, that's what the word is. <laughs> <laughs> Figured it out from a... Did you say porn break? Yes, I'm an adult. <laughs> Scully, do you want to tell them what the word was yesterday? The word was perky. That word, that, that, that is, yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's a word you would work out from porn, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, perky nips are best nips. There you go. <laughs> oh. I mean, I think perky is fine. I like, I like them a little, you know, differently. But you know, perky's good too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I just love the fact that it just. I, I, I feel like, I, I do the, I do the whole like, oh, I took a porn break thing type stuff so casually. I forget other people can do it too. Outside of me and Becky. <laughs> it's just it's kind of like doing something different to clear your head, and that was just genuinely happened to be the thing that I did. Like, ah, oh. and I was like, actually, that makes it funnier because of what the word turned out to be. So. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, I'm just imagining now. Ah, well, boons look really, really perky. Oh my god, that's the word. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. uh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I I haven't gotten into Wordle. I, I like I do like puzzle games and games that make your brain work and all that. But I just never really got mm. into Wordle itself. It's like, eh. I've got I've got. I like it because it's things. like the cheap. I like the community that's sort of subtly building up around it, where people are just posting their things. I like because I, Scully, do you ever look at people, other people's grids and try and work out what their go backwards and work out what their start word is? Because I know what yours is oh, now, yeah. but yeah, um, sometimes I do try to mix it up. Um, you know, yeah. on today's. Um... <sighs> okay, so yeah, this might be a spoiler, but okay, so my starting <laughs> word is rates because I've worked out that okay, those are five of the most used letters. Uh, and, you know, if I can knock those out, I can, you know, do stuff by process of elimination. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like, but sometimes, it, sometimes it's like, oh, oh, I don't even have one letter that's even yellow. Yeah, It's I like, know. oh, 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 God, oh, God. <laughs> and, okay, there was, there was one word a few, uh, like, a week or so ago. It, oh, my God. It had an X and a Y in it. Oh my god, that's, that's that was kind of. Oh, that was that proxy. That was yeah. amazing. <laughs> like I knew the word just because. Oh, I'm. Oh, that's what they used to call VPNs, and I'm using one. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Neat. So it is. It is fun. Like I said, the, the community aspect of it, just seeing all the, the, the grids and stuff um, on, on Twitter, is quite a, kind of fun. And yeah. plus, I um. I beat uh, Linda Carter 
the other day, so that's funny. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I, I downloaded this because uh, Ricky, do you even know what we're talking about? Because I know you're not very social media. I have a, uh, I have a working knowledge of it. Yes. Yep. Well, I think this sums it up for those of you who aren't playing. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Something's not right here. There's no fire escape, <laughs> or whatever the line is. <laughs> 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 Uh, I I really I have not watched The Simpsons in years. <laughs> me neither, but I mean, no, me but neither. It was That's so a classic. Hilarious. It yeah. was so hilarious in the nineties. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I think with with the I think with most of us we can mostly say that The Simpsons was our childhood. It was, it was yeah. ge- multi generational at this point. Because they started, what, 89, I think it was? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, like I, that. Yeah, I was definitely a kid. Uh. Yeah. And then, that like... Was a young teen. Yeah. So it was like, oof, a childhood! Literally. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. <sighs> but, yeah, so how, how have you been, Ricky? I've been doing okay. I've had a bit of uh, ill health because I get migraines so I had a killer migraine oh, this, uh, past, past week so uh, that was fun to have to deal with but no other than that being fine yeah. right. uh, damn you <laughs> migraines uh, this is why I avoid strong cheese and red wine there you go. It's, in, it's in the family ah man okay I've noticed that uh, hard cider uh, gives me, you know, headaches. Yeah. I, I've I noticed... think you have to qualify that it's hard cider. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sorry. something... It's a cider! <laughs> yeah. Something that I have yeah, noticed... Yeah, it's different over here. Yeah. Something but I've cider, noticed sorry. is, um, like, when I go to bed, I'll usually fill up my water bottle. I have, like, the water bottle, the filter thing and all of that. I'll fill it up when I go to bed just so I have something to... I can, like, have a sip in the morning. I take a sip of that water, and sometimes my head starts throbbing just a little bit. Not a lot. And, and it usually goes away quickly, so I was like, hmm. But I took... But last night, I had my bottle filled with ice water. Like, with, you know, as in with ice and all of that. Um, mm. Took that to bed with me. And overnight, of course, the ice melted, and, and it's fine, whatever. I took a drink of that. Nothing really. So, hmm. Mm. But, but yeah. And of course, you know, you drink too much, you don't drink enough water, then yeah, you're gonna. Ooh. Yeah. That's not gonna. Yeah. Be good. <laughs> yep. uh. Yeah. I always make sure, like, whenever I like drink something alcoholic, I make sure to like, you know. Basically, what I'll do is like I'll take whatever bottle or can I had, you know, just empty out the whatever like whatever little bit is remaining, and then fill it up with water, and then drink that. It works. I haven't had a hangover in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, see, with me, usually I, I'll, I like drink vodka in a solo cup. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that will... yeah. Yeah. Like, oh dear. But I also, I do make sure I try to have at least, in my case, like the, the Brita water filter bottle, which is probably about the same amount as a solo cup. Maybe a little mm. bit more, maybe a little bit less, give or take, alongside that. And if, and but before that, I had like. Two or three bottles of the Dasani bottled water too, so it's it's not for lack of trying on my end. It's just sometimes you miss yeah. the mark. Just a sports bottle with council juice for me. There you Don't go. Don't have to get all fancy with it. Yeah. And really, what I should do is like the next time I drink, make sure I have a fresh bag of bacon jerky or something with a lot of uh, protein in it. Yep, yep. Cause peanuts. There you go. That peanuts too. Yeah. Peanuts, cashews, almonds. They're all good. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I love me some cashews. I haven't had those. Oh so hell long. yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. So so we are so we are talking about about you know like like uh, physical things things that could uh, potentially be medical you know things that could help you know with a hangover or or things that might affect our heads um, positively or negatively. Um, that's gonna be a hell of a way to get into this first article that I brought up here. Uh, because you mean I'm, we have a segue? We have a segue. <laughs> Holy shit! 
Uh, we're not parlaying <laughs> it this time. Uh, so everybody who's on social media, and even people who are not on social media, I'm surprised that I would be very surprised if Fox News was not, you know, wringing their hands over this. Um, but Spotify has been it's in the news. It's not candy, so. <laughs> oh. Uh, Tucker Carlson doesn't want to fuck Spotify anymore. <laughs> and it's not Minnie Mouse in a in a business suit. Uh, did, you, uh, did you see that one? I saw that one. That one. I saw the design. Of the design is all right. He's cute. And yeah, also, Candace Owens went on. Went, Candace Owens went on Fox News and went on a tirade about how it's Disney uh, trying to promote transgender. It's oh, fuck off with that! It's literally a woman wearing pants. Women have wear, uh, worn pants without being seen as trans for for literally generations now at this point. Like I'm wearing trousers. Irony. Yeah. Yeah, the supreme irony of it was she was moaning about Minnie Mouse wearing a, a business type suit while she herself was wearing a business suit. Oh my god. Uh, but I, 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 Candace that woman is has no self awareness. Yeah. She is she is I I, I what what is it the kids call her? A pick me? She's one of those pick me people. She's a for... grifter, is what she is. She, I, I'll, I'll bet you she does not even believe half the shit she spews. I, I, uh... I both hope so. I hope you're right, but I also hope you're wrong because I don't know which is worse. Oh, yeah. Because if she yeah, does she believe it, believe... that's obviously worse. But if she doesn't believe it, that's also bad. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> she doesn't believe half of it, and she's too stupid to understand the other half of it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I. I... Is it? Oh. Is, is it racially and or transly um, insensitive to call her the uh, black player white? I, I mean, it's fair. I'd say so, yeah. And, and I was about to note for people who, who's, if this was their first time hearing about Candace Owens, she is a black woman who is kissing the ass of the GOP. Who are currently being overrun by a lot of a lot of white supremacists? I say overrun. So, but, you know. So it's like you know, it would be like it would be like if Martin Luther King Jr. kissed the ass of the KKK back in the sixties. That's yeah. that's that's how it looks. And Baron and, and yeah, you know, I I don't know if I'm overstepping because I'm just some dumb white honky, but yeah, this is how it looks to me here. Uh, Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, especially if you're a person of color. But that's yeah. how it's looking. That's how it's looking. Uh, and for those of you who don't know Blair White, she is a trans woman who basically um, sucks up two turfs. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, that's a short version. Yeah, it's like in, in both of these cases, <laughs> yeah, they're going to use you until you are they are done with you. And they will dispose of you in probably the most horrific way possible. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm only slightly hyperbolizing. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I've had a friend. I mean, I had a friend who, who herself is also a trans woman, who ended up mm -hmm. siding with Trump. You know, during all that, and I'm like, you realize, he le he is leading people that want to see you dead. Yep. Like, what the fuck? Exactly. Uh. Anyway, speaking of transphobes, presumably, I, I, I am assuming he is. But uh, Spotify has been doubling down on their support for Joe Rogan, who has been spewing mm. so much crazy conspiracy bullshit. And if he's not spewing it, he's being, bringing people on to do it. Like, like the most recent one I can think of is Jordan Peterson, who himself has a whole uh. whole Encyclopedia Britannica set full of issues. You know, yeah. You know the kind yeah. of people that think that. That men should be this way, women should be that way, you know, the, the so-called traditionalists, when they're really regressivists. Uh, How far back do you have to go to be traditional? Because if you go back far enough, women, uh, the guys are wearing, like, you know, corsets and, you know, high heels and, you know, powdered wigs and, like, depending on where you, where you are and what era we're in. But, you know, there's no such thing as a traditional masculine man through the history books. They want to live in the life of those coronet shorts from the 50s and 60s and, so, and stuff like that. You know, the kind of shorts mm -hmm. that tell white people how to act because they apparently think white people are too stupid. Uh, <laughs> or or better yet, it's just uh, lots of uh, indo indoctrination and brainwashing. So, 
I mean, I saw one of those that was like, it was a riff show on mm -hmm. one of those, but it was um, how to slice meat. And I like, you say fair, that was interesting. They were giving interesting information with the meat slicing. Yeah. Because that hasn't really changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. It's a crapshoot. Sometimes it's like, okay, yeah. yeah okay, it's fine. Other things <laughs> is like, no, what? Really? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure even like, like there was one of them like, uh, there's one called Cindy Goes to a Party. Been covered by, think... been covered by riff tracks. Been covered by a yes, couple of people we don't. Been covered by a couple yeah. of people we don't associate with anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but it's like it's all about how to go to a party. When in other words, and when, and I see like um, I could probably see like other white people in the fifties be like be like, yeah, this is boring. Nobody really does this. We all we all just <laughs> do drugs and 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 hang out in the corner and make out. Yeah. Uh so anyway, Spotify, as 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 mentioned, they're they're doubling down on their support of Joe Rogan. They have so far, according to this article title on Variety, they have lost more than two billion in market value. And this is after Neil Young decided, hey, you know what? Um, y'all won't keep me on here. You can get you need to get rid of Rogan there. You know, which I've seen some people argue that's not the best way to go, but you know, Neil Young base, you know, he's like. Even if you're not into his music or anything, you most likely have heard the name. He is, he he is a a I want to say legendary musician at this point because he's been going at it for such a long time, such a well known name. But you know, you want to go with legendary musician who definitely definitely has helped make you money, or do you want to go with the grifter? Spotify went with the grifter. Neil Young said, "All right, I'm pulling." <laughs> And he's not the only one. Uh, another one that's noted, like one of the sidebars in this article, is Joni Mitchell, uh, who also has like, yeah, whoop, nope, not having that there. And by the way, I do realize that I am saying this on a show that through Anchor is distributed to Spotify, but mm -hmm. bear in mind, I don't put it on there myself. It's Anchor is the one who does that. Um, right. Spotify can go yeah. and pound sand for all I care. We have other outlets, you know. We have a whole site that I could put this on. Granted, I have to upload it to the one version to YouTube and put it on that way because, you know, doing the audio version on the site directly is not an option at the moment. But mm. I can always provide one, you know. Uh, and, of course, all patrons do get the audio version because I can upload that directly to Patreon. Uh, anyway. Uh, Spotify's market capitalization fell about $2.1 billion over a three-day span this week, coming after folk rocker Neil Young yanked his songs from the audio streaming giant to protest Joe Rogan's misinformation spreading podcast. Shares of Spotify spell, fell 6% from January 26th through the 28th. <laughs> over the same time period, the tech-heavy Nasdaq composite index rose 1.7, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 1.1%. Okay, we didn't really need to know that. It came after Young announced Wednesday that he was demanding the company drop his music, writing that Spotify has recently become a very damaging force via its public misinformation and lies about COVID. He didn't cite Rogan by name, but referred to an open letter from doctors and health professionals issued earlier this month, calling on Spotify to crack down on coronavirus-related falsehoods on the Joe Rogan experience. Now, see, that... I, 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 got, I got into a little back and forth with someone on Twitter who mm. didn't like the idea of the the whole demand Rogan be taken off a of Spotify angle, even though the in re, even though the end result it would be ideal that Rogan is not platformed on such a huge platform, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. It, it's just you know they 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 saw different methods there, but at the same time it's like no, when we have we're still dealing with COVID, we still have to mask up when we go out. We still have to worry about our vaccines. I mean. We're probably gonna have to worry about our vaccines for a long time, which okay, mm -hmm. fine, small price to pay, you know that sort of thing. But the more more people who drink his particular brand of Flavorade and decide, hey, he's right, instead of listening to actual doctors who went to school for this shit, that's a uh, problem. No. Sometimes, sometimes we have to protect the stupid people from themselves. <laughs> or the gullible people from themselves, whichever the case may be. 
Yep. You know, some people might be like, oh, that, just let the stupid people kill themselves off. And in some instances, you can maybe see that, but this is not one of them. Because here's the thing, the stupid people wouldn't be taking themselves down. They'd be also be taking everybody else down, too. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to go down with some stupid person who decides that they don't want to get the vaccine because some asshole with a podcast told them not to do it. I'm an asshole with a podcast, and I'm telling you to do it. So, you know. This is... This is the thing that just occurred to me as you're sort of saying that is they all say, "Oh, I'm a free thing. I'm an independent thing. I do my own research." This guy on a podcast told me, so I'm independent. Right. Yeah, that kind of shit. Mm. Now I have not listened to the joke. Oh. No, I'm just like, I'm not. I'm not wrong, am I? Like, how is that independent thinking? Right. It's like. <laughs> it's like and. and and it's something that I'm, I'm going to try and more consciously bring up on this show in particular. It's like, yeah, we're going to tell you our opinions. We're going to tell you, you know, what things here are there and how we see things, you know. Mm. And I, I, I honestly, I openly invite somebody. If there is something wrong or if you have it, maybe an angle that maybe we didn't see or whatever, bring it to us. Shit, man. Yeah. We're on Twitter. We like some that. You know. Yeah. You know, we got a site. You got a YouTube channel you can, you can put a comment on, you know. If it's spam, mm-hmm. I'll probably just delete it. But, but yeah. you know, you bring something thoughtful, sure. You know, we'll look into it. Hell, I would love to have like a dedicated section just to read up, read back certain comments. You know, that would be great. But yeah. you know, yeah. So more engagement <sighs> is what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. But I did see a great uh, meme about. I've started watching the click. He's like the um, anti OT, but mm-hmm. you know, in a wholesome kind of way. And um, the, he he featured a, a meme which is basically, can all those people that are accusing us of being sheep stop taking um, horse medicine? Right. <laughs> or, 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 or medicine oh, for right. livestock. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like y'all. I understand that there is distrust about the government. Let me tell you something. That's nothing new. People were distrusting the government since all of us were kids. And that's yep. for particular decades in history at least. You uh-huh. know? So it was like... What? Hmm. I know Ricky's a little bit younger than me, so I don't know where the crossover lies. But when I was a child, Margaret Thatcher was in office. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> when did she leave office? I can't remember. I think she was. I think she was still in. I think I was. I was born just around the tail end of when she left. Uh-oh. I get. My, I was still. It was before I moved. Uh, so late eighties, early nineties. Hey Google, when did Margaret Thatcher leave? Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. She resigned. <laughs> <laughs> hey Google, stop! Thank you. Ah, yeah. uh, Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bless her. She, yeah, she, she, she's good. Yeah, managing to emulate John Sargent on the way out. Yeah. Ah, uh, but they were, they were doing a live broadcast, and he was saying, "We're we're not sure when she's coming out," and the, and she was literally coming out just as he was saying, "We're not sure when when she's coming out." Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's funny. But yeah, the the point of all of that is, yeah. People have been distrusting of the government since pretty much time immemorial. You can probably find documents Uh, from the the Civil War area, area, era, and before, saying, "Yeah, I I don't trust. I don't. I don't trust this this Lincoln fella, or or I don't like this Jefferson Davis fella." You know, if you're doing the time of the Confederacy, you know, it is a near universal thing that governments are very, very lowly trusted. You can trust them on some things. You can trust them to go fuck up another country because of some dick waving contest. You can trust them on that. But there's some, and and another one of those things you can usually trust them on, depending on who is in office and what the reputation of the individual people are, is medical things. Because let me tell you something. A lot of people understand that if 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 they don't have a constituency, they don't have citizens. They don't have power. They don't. They they don't have people to convince to vote for them, or work for them. You need people. Mm-hmm. So it's in their best interest to make sure that there is the best medical information 
you know, possible out there. Now, there are some people out there who don't give a shit and only care about their money and don't care whether or not their people live or die. Hi, Ron DeSantis. Fuck you. I hope you get tossed into the ocean. Take a shot. Yep. Take that shot. You know. Yep. But by and large, the, the, the CDC, you know, is trustworthy. You mm. know, because it's like they, they hire people to do their research. And Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter who is in the office. I don't care. Who, who, doesn't matter who's running the government. By and large, they're they're going to put out the information that's that's right and proper. You know, mm. especially when there are so many people who have already gotten the vaccine, such as myself, and the Funny. associated boosters, such as myself, yep. Uh, yep. that we can yep. show you that yeah, nothing's wrong. And if we happen to contract COVID, it's not going to affect us as much as somebody who doesn't have it. Which is also why we um, still wear masks, even though we're vaccinated. We're protected. Yep. But if we can still contract it and the way it spreads, hey, guess what? It might accidentally spread to you. I do not want to be intentionally responsible for that. Mm-hmm. So only times... Well, knowingly I, intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to unknowingly intentional. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, so I mean, when I when if I if I go out to eat, then I'm you know I'm masked up until I'm at my table, and even then mm-hmm. I keep my head down. I typically don't go looking okay. around, you know. I don't go talking to other tables or what have you. I keep it in my in my space, you know. All right. So you know, but if I have to get up from the table, whoop, mask goes back on. I do mm-hmm. what I need to. Hell, even at the table, I don't take off the mask until I'm ready to start eating or drinking. So, you know. Yep. Just, okay, um, so kind of a tangent, slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, obviously, uh, Meatloaf has recently passed, and that was sad. That was sad. But then there's all the stuff about him being, like, mostly conservative, which I think he's always been, you know, people like being aware that he's conservative. And I don't know the exact on this, but apparently he was spouting anti-mandate stuff and not necessarily anti-vaccine so not not necessarily about me like um himself but as a general thing and obviously disinformation is not a good thing and Mm -hmm. obviously you can have an opinion although you think mandates are true do we honestly think that um being anti-mandate is a good enough reason to cancel someone especially if that's the only sort of political thing that you don't agree with they've said because it seems to be like a lot of like I would say it depends on the mandate. Like, like, like the the, the idea of the COVID vaccination mandate. Yeah, you want to get people vaccinated to to fight this damn thing. It's for the interest of public health. That is understandable. Yeah. Mask mandate, same thing. You know, public health. And hey, guess what? Uh, Japan, whenever they get sick and they still need to go out, they put on a damn mask, with or without COVID, hmm. and it helps yeah, yeah, yeah. reduce the spread of things like the cold or the flu. Which, hey, we could do that over here. You know, make make that a big cultural change, you know? So, like, even, mm. you know, even if we get to a point where COVID is just, like, on the same level of threat as, say, the flu, where you just have to get a shot every year or what have you, you know, we get it to that particular level, then, you know, we could, we could still go out and wear masks. Number one, I got a whole bunch of masks from Mel, and they look really damn cool, and I want to mm. show them off. And number mm-hmm. two... If you have a cold or something or you develop something, you're protecting others. So I was like, yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't have to spread that around. So it, it's it's good regardless. So, And mm. and you brought up Meatloaf and, oh, God, how many celebrities died since the past show? Because it's like, it was like Meatloaf, he, he died uh, Louis from Anderson as well? Mm. Louis Anderson, Meatloaf, Bob Saget fucking died. That was yeah. a shock. That was like, holy that fuck. That one hit. It's like, oh my god, like, like again, going back to like the nostalgia childhood. I grew up watching him on Full House. Yeah, and it was like, and it was like, yeah. dude. And then somebody came out of the work where he was like, oh, he did this to the Olsen twins, even though the Olsen twins haven't said anything one way or the other. I'm pretty sure by this point, they have enough clout to say, yeah, he did this. But the the worst I've heard was him doing like a, a an off color joke in front of kids back in like the early. You know, like the first season or two, and after that, he was yeah. like, "Yeah, that's some fucked up shit. We ain't gonna do that again." You know, he was rightfully mm-hmm. called out for it, and he and he adjusted. 
That's how it works. He did it. He he did the thing. That's how it works. You get called out for something like that, and and you're like, oh shit, I was a shitbag. Sorry, I won't do that. (laughs) Yep. Anybody who's seen the stand-up knows he obviously kept himself very blue, but that was for adults. Not for kids. Mm -hmm. It's not meant for kids. So, you know. Uh, I saw this great thing in like um in like in the family, um, you know, when the adults are taking it seriously. It was like a list of like different things that were, you know, yeah. when, you know, when the adults in your family see you as an adult. And like number one was like they start telling dirty jokes in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's like Oh, and and of course, any accusations made against Bob Saget that turn out to be not true is also going to really make it difficult for other actual victims to come forward. Thanks, yeah. assholes. Yep. Uh, so to get back to Spotify, um, and this article, it's worth noting that Spotify's stock rebounded slightly Friday, the day before we recorded this, closing up one percent to one seventy two ninety eight per share, mid a broader market upturn. However, that came before Joni Mitchell announced that she too would be removing her music from Spotify. Uh, irresponsible people are spreading lies that are costing people their lives. Stand in solidarity with Neil Young and the global scientific and medical communities on this issue, the singer-songwriter wrote. Uh, for Spotify investors, the concern is that the artist exodus could snowball in the coming days and drive a material number of customer cancellations. Well, the second part has already been happening. To the point where... Spotify's uh, customer service got so bogged down that they could not process, they could not like process cancellations, which you have to actually talk to a person to. And by talk, you know, you just, I am a person or whatever. Mm. You know, that sort of thing. Another way to do, another way to uh, cancel if you don't have that option, just remove your credit card info. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Um, but yeah, there are hashtags on on like social medias. You got the cancel Spotify, delete Spotify, and buy Spotify. I think I did cancel Spotify on mine. Mm. Um, I never had it. I I played with it when it first started, but I couldn't get on with it. So yeah, I had it for a hot minute while I was driving before. Um, and and in fairness, it's helped me reconnect with songs and artists that I hadn't listened to in years. And so like, oh hey, do I still have those on? my own on-site, on-computer library. And if I don't, I can either go buy it through iTunes and have it, or, more likely, go get it off of YouTube. Mm. You know. So it was like, it was, so it was good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just... The, 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 the whole idea, the whole thing behind Spotify and Joe Rogan is like, uh, it's like, Spotify, you're going to, if you keep doubling and tripling down, you're going to lose a lot of money, you you know. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. But who knows? Who knows? It could be a situation where he gets, you know, where Spotify gets supported by people on the far right that have money to, to blow on shit like this. And if that's the case, then, well, fuck Spotify anyway, you know? It'll be, it'll be yet another another social media social music platform that's been infested with alt-right far-right nazis and anti-vaxxers and the worst dregs of humanity Mm. and the people who are gullible enough to believe them like i said sometimes you have to protect the stupid people and it's hard to do that when the stupid people aren't listening yep yeah uh ricky we we i think the three of us have kind of gotten into our own thing uh (laughs) ricky what do you think about all this Oh, it's, it, I don't think how to word this. Mm-hmm. Joe Rogan has a right to have what guests on he wants, but at the same time, he does have to take some. Res- he is going to at some point have to take responsibility. Yeah. And if this is the way it is, I don't want to say forced, but if this is the way it is, he is made to do so. Then that's on him, not on Neil Young. These people who are criticizing Neil Young or any of these who are like saying, "Oh, they're trying to cancel," like, no, they're standing up for what they believe in. If that unfortunately... it's only canceling when oh, sorry. No, sorry. You go on, Michelle. You think you're gonna? It's only canceling when that. um. Uh, it's it's only canceling when we do it. When they do it, yeah. it's not. It's not... Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it... 
if he ends up losing out because of this, that is on him. He has made the choice to have these people on that he knows are controversial. Yeah. That he knows are spouting views that are not backed up by any evidence of any kind. That isn't, at the very least, purely anecdotal. Yeah. Or is... I saw one clip where he was talking about um, the, the, the heart thing that can, in very, very rare cases in kids, can be caused by the, the, vac- the vaccination. Mm-hmm. Yes, it can be, but that bit of that tiny little bit of truth is being expanded upon to where it becomes a non truth. It's mm. like, yes, yeah. this is a very slight chance this can happen. There is a much bigger chance if they get COVID without yeah. the vaccine. Exactly. Yep. It's so it's like, yes, this may be a harsh way to do it, but at the same uh, that famous um, quote, uh, saying that I keep hearing a lot of times into things like this, freedom of speech, not freedom from consequences. Exactly. That's on, yes. that's on my Twitter profile. <laughs> yeah. This is like, it's like, it's like I told somebody on Twitter, Joe Rogan, you can spew whatever shit he wants. We don't like it. It's inherently dangerous, but he can spew whatever shit he wants. We don't have to platform him. And yep. we have the right to talk to a platform and say, hey, this guy is doing this bullshit on your platform. We think it doesn't fit. Or even some people might even be rude or say, hey, you need to get this shit off of here because it is, he's going to harm your, your your listenership, you know, your customer mm-hmm. base. Yeah. But, you know, and if they don't do that well, then the consequences are Neil Young, yeet. Um, who, who, who else was it? Joni Mitchell, yeet. You know, all of these uh-huh. customers saying yeet, 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 and yeet, saying bye bye. We're not dealing with you. You know, at, at the time, at the time this all dropped, my Spotify was only a, a free Spotify, and honestly, the only th- reason I had it installed was to listen to uh, Mulco Replay, which is uh, Mars Girl and, and Josh Knight the First podcast on City Hunter. Um, that's the only reason I had it on there because they, for whatever reason, it's not on iTunes. I don't know why. But, mm. or at least I haven't seen it on iTunes yet. But, um, but you know, but you know, they have they they have that podcast other in other places. I can go find it elsewhere. I don't need Spotify. And it's like, yeah, well, bye. Whoop. So I just deleted the app off of all of my shit. Um, went to go make sure my full account was actually canceled. To where it's like, I couldn't even you know delete that outright and that's where I had to go and talk to the the person mm. on hand too so and deleting my um, payment info wouldn't have done a thing because I wasn't paying anything so but but yeah if you want to delete it completely you got to go in and say hey remove my account I don't want it on here anymore you got to go in and do the DMs with somebody on that one mm. just oh damn uh but yeah, um, th- if this article does note that there is a New York Times piece from last July that's titled Joe Rogan is too big to cancel, which included this detail. Among top Spotify leadership, people familiar with the company say uh, the notion that Mr. Rogan pre- presents any kind of regrettable executive headache is laughable. <laughs> let's prove them wrong. Please, <laughs> let us prove them wrong. Because... As long as enough people abide, people like Joe Rogan or or Tucker Carlson or whoever, as long as enough people abide by them, the, the higher-ups are going to see the dollar signs. And this is, this is one of those cases where it all boils down to vote with your wallet. You know? I would, but they don't have my wallet. There you go, you know. <laughs> And, and and even if and even if you're not voting with your wallet, you're outwardly saying, "Hey, I am not going to have this app on my systems anymore because of this." That also sends a message too, because I'm pretty sure fewer people that actually have the app or go to their site or anything like that is going to be fewer people that they could turn into potential paying customers. Yeah. So, you know, enough people yeah. need to get on board and say, "Hey." We're not doing this. 
you know, we're 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 not we're not about you anymore, Spotify. Fuck you. We're going to Apple Music. You know. Mm. You know, all my homies hate Spotify now. I guess I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Just oh boy. Just just yeah, Spotify. You know, bold strategy got Let's see how it works out for you. You know, and if it doesn't work out for you, well, welcome to the consequences of your actions. But bear in mind, at this point, they've lost more yep. than two billion in market value. So, so and maybe it'll work. Neil Young. Yeah, and that's just Neil Young. Can you imagine if some of these? I mean, I know Stevie Nicks. She has her stuff on there. At least last I checked. Imagine her pulling that shit off. Like, yeah, no, boom, fuck you. You know. You know, her Fleetwood Mac, Weird Al Yankovic, pretty much any mm. any of these larger names you can think of that would be on Spotify saying, no, I don't want my stuff on there. And just whoop, right on up. Uh, ask- Sorry, since you, since you brought up Weird Al, um, mm-hmm. Daniel Radcliffe playing him in a biopic, yes or yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, so... With that, we are going to go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, we're going to have um, some really good news and then a very funny article about a certain somebody who inspired the title of this very episode. So uh, we'll be right back. Hey, folks, we'll get back to the show in a moment. But first, I want to tell you about Patreon. Uh, Patreon is what I use to get around all of the YouTube ad- adpocalypse bullshit. And while I don't have a lot right now, every little bit does help. And if you like what you hear or what you see on any of my videos or podcasts, head on over there for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of these things early before anybody else does, and you can get them completely ad-free. Yeah, I know YouTube right now is technically ad-free, but at some point I'm probably going to get big enough to where ads will start coming in. And those can be annoying, so you want to avoid that, right? If you go ahead and go now over to patreon.com slash gomer 2 double x leave a dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter how much, you can get all of these, again, you can get them early, and you get them without ads, even when I reach the point on YouTube to where ads can be put on these videos. So it's a win-win. And you can even avoid the ads that go up on the Anchor versions that go out to all of the other websites that are out there. No ads. It's great. Uh, so that's patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X. And now, an important message from Tyler Green, Kitty Quinn, and Randy Martin. Are you tired of asking yourself if that obscure show or movie you watched once was a fever dream? Is it still in your brain to this day as a 3 a.m. channel-changing hallucination? Well, join us as we yank that said memory out of your subconscious while we do a deep dive on it on Channel KRT. Channel KRT is a new bi-weekly podcast where we look at the best and worst of obscure media. We'll be covering such topics as... The Puzzle Place. Clown TV. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Reanimated. The Weird Al Show. We Sing. And And more. more. Join us every other week over at Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Channel KRT cuts static. Hey, y'all. Want to watch some anime? I haven't seen this one. Ooh, good idea. I've been meaning to watch this one. Hey, can we watch this one? I was, uh, distracted. Ignoring how easily Gomer is distracted by booty, how about this one? Alright, alright. How about this? Let's just pick one and watch one episode a week. We can even talk about it on a podcast. It's random, it's anime. What should we call it? Randomate. Check out Randomate. Recorded every week at twitchtv.com backslash Rose and Thorn. Twitchtv.com. Oh, good lord. This I is all died. staying in. Howdy, howdy, everybody, and welcome to this little segment of the show that I like to do here in the middle here, just to give, just to give a little bit of a maybe a breather, uh, or updates or what have you for, um, you know, in the middle of the show to just kind of break it up a little bit, which I would like to have others come in and like 
and like send some stuff in to break up the monotony a little bit so it's not just me for the additional five ten minutes out of like an hour and a half two hour show um but uh, you know it'll be fine <laughs> um I, 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 I seriously do wouldn't mind if somebody wanted to send and say, here, play this during your break segment. It's like, okay. Um, I can't pay anything if you do, so it would have to be a volunteer basis. So, And I understand if you can't because of money. Um, but if you do, that's great. Um, it, it'll be a big help. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what do you pay? I pay in, uh, I pay in dick. But, but I don't, but you're not compatible with that. Not that kind of dick. Um, but no, uh, speaking of paying a dick, uh, I recently picked up, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, which is on, like, a whole bunch of the modern platforms, and, uh, it's, it's a free-to-play game, uh, if you're familiar with, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game, this, this will be right up your alley. I played it a bit when it was, you know, in, like, the mid-2000s or whatever, and it's, it's quite fun, um, it helps get you into, like, the newer mechanics if it's been a while for you, um, allows you to get most of the cards that you've seen over the years, there are a couple of them that I would really like to get, but I haven't seen yet, so... But I also haven't done a whole lot of looking. I'm just like, okay, build from this, there's this, oh, here's this, that, and the other, and that's, that's really fun. Um, but yeah, you can go online to duel people right away. The The rewards you get while, the, you know, you can get daily rewards for logging in, uh, gems to like get booster packs, um, stuff to get to like build your own individual cards. You get those from like dueling online with people, um, and it's 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 hard to describe without actually showing you how it plays or whatever. Um, if you follow me on Twitch at at uh, Gomer Ranting Thespian, uh, my latest stream as of this as of this recording, uh, which should be uh, da -da 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 -da, January twenty seventh. Um, that, that particular one has like a whole night of me doing it if you want to get an idea of how it looks and how it plays and everything. And also get a good look at my 3D model, you know, my, my VTuber model, which I've been able to work with and, and put together through, uh, uh, what's the name of the program? The name of the program is Vroid Studio, uh, which again, it's a free program, has a lot of, you know, it's, it's a pre-rendered thing and you can adjust it as, at will. Um, uh, only problem was I couldn't get that particular model to do the mouth moves, um, which is weird. I, I don't understand why we couldn't do that, but I don't know. I, I it's very it's very possible I could have just fucked up somewhere. Yeah, but what can you do, right? Um, but yeah. So the the second half of the show is going to be a lot more upbeat. Thankfully, uh, we got some really good news, even if it is a little bittersweet con considering our country's history. Uh, American history was, you know, for, for those who are like, wait, what country are you in? I'm in America. <laughs> if that wasn't clear. Um, and, and, and I, and I like to be, I like, I like to make sure people understand. Um, yeah. So enjoy the second half. Um, and, uh, hope you have a good laugh. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. So yeah, I'm I'm trying a different thing considering I'm editing this a little bit differently and I can just easily stop and start start the recording instead of just being one super chunk that I have to do keep continually re rechunk out into two different uh, scenes, if you will. Um I just like, you know what? But one in one scene, one in the other scene, there you go, we're done. <laughs> uh make it easier on my editing self. Uh Oh, Future Gummel will thank you. Yes, he will. And he better. Future Gummel better be so thankful. He comes back comes back in time to just suck my dick. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Future Gummel doesn't know where this thing's it. been yet. Or does he? <laughs> Wait. Oh, no, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, time travel is fun. Yeah. You know my favorite random fact about, um, is it, uh, hmm? I, 
I think it's Austin, Austin Powers 3. The one that's got both, uh, yeah, it must be three because it's, uh, it's the one with Michael Caine. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. Despite both being, you know, British actors of a certain standing and having like about a hundred or something credits between them, that was the first time Michael York and Michael Caine they worked together. Huh. <sighs> yeah. Well, damn, well, damn that's kind of neat. Yeah, especially for a British actors because they're always bumping into each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like you could do things <laughs> like, I mean, hell, even like the more worldwide, you know, the more globally, um, uh, I want, I don't want to say acceptable because that's not the word I want. Um, mm. yeah, you know, you know, think like Doctor Who, Harry Potter, you know, all, all the crossovers between those two. And then of course they cross over what? into things all over the planet too, because there's like, hell, there's even like a little bit of Doctor Who and General Hospital crossover slightly. This is one character, one actor. Who was like like a recurring character on General Hospital, but he was on like one one two parter in in modern Doctor Who. <laughs> what have you got, uh, <clears throat> Ricky? You might be more familiar with the uh, David Tennant's um, Casanova it came out the same time as the um, film came out, so it kind of got people a bit confused. Yes. Hmm. But I have a one rule drinking game for that series, which is basically any time aside from David Tennant and Sean Parks, someone who's been in New Who appears on screen. That is a game that gets more and more dangerous as the series continues. <laughs> <laughs> that game can be applied to anything that Russell T. Davis has produced, though. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, but it very... feels... It feels more notable with Casanova's particularly, though. If you actually... That's why I include Sean Parks, because he's in every episode as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, point, fair point, point about yeah. most Russell... But, yeah. He is a very old school uh, kind of producer director in that respect that he he actually does still seem to operate under the uh, repertoire, yeah. like the repertoire company type way of casting people. That he has his group of people that he will use all the time. Yeah, yeah, kind of like uh, John Waters. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh, itchy it, it. uh. Sorry. I love these ear beans, but they do make my ears more itchy. Yeah. Oh lordy. Oh god, I've got this. I've got this news article up, and they're and they're apparently got the video covering the northeastern snowstorm up up on like Massachusetts, New England, all that good shit. Oh. Uh, <sighs> Freya and Randy live up there. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a little bit of it. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind a little snow. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, a little is all right. Yeah. I was just going to say, speaking of articles going, I've got a short one that should be a good bit of fun for us to talk about. From that's uh, happened over this side of the pond. All right. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The government not getting its own way and making themselves look like idiots again. Oh. Uh... <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh, and I'm and I'm just now looking at. I'm just not looking at what you would put in the green room and, and like, oh hey, mash reference, cool. Yeah. Oh, speaking of ma- speaking of mash, I recently got this gum and I couldn't help but think of you actually. So let oh. me put that in, in there as well. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. That, that's that is cute. awesome. Uh, oh god, we gotta we gotta show that to Mikey, uh, uh, Mikey Gleason, who's on our site. <laughs> And uh, he he is a mass fan. Uh, yeah. And I and I, I think everybody's on I think everybody's on board that that um, Hawkeye is definitely bisexual. <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah. And they got away with a pecking joke in the seventies. How do you do that? <laughs> uh, be Alan Alda. That's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Reminds me of that joke about um, how to get a million uh, Twitter followers in one day. Step one: be Robert Downey Jr. There you go. <laughs> there is no step two. Yep. Uh... I think, I think since then he has been beaten. Like some other people have done it pretty fast as well. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Million, million, <clears throat> million Twitter followers percent speed run. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I have a 
have a fun uh, speed run thing either. Um, it's only like a brief thing, but we can bring that up on the show. Okay. But no, um, he had this, uh, RDJ posted up this picture um, of himself in a particular t-shirt. And he goes, I am the only one who can wear this t-shirt. It says, I am fucking Robert Downey Jr. And then someone posted on it. You could give it to your wife. Oh, that is true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> Uh, she'd probably wear it as well she seems like a laugh there you go uh, uh, alrighty she, Susan seems like she's got a sense of humour there you go uh, but yeah alright <laughs> let's get the second half going in 5 4 3 2 1 and we are <coughs> back from our break and uh yeah we got we got some lighter fare for the second half of the show um because you know hey why not we got we got we got we got the medicine we took the medicine now we need the spoonful of sugar that'll help the medicine go down wait is this supposed to be mixed with it or is it supposed to come first i don't remember but you know it's been a while since i've watched mary poppins i mean i know the polio vaccine used to be given on a sugar cube so maybe that's where it came from ah probably um uh, so anyway, this this article I pulled out from ABC News, which that's a that's a news site that I haven't used in a while. Uh, so uh, Moderna, yes, the same Moderna that gave us a lot of these uh, COVID vaccines, uh, they announced Thursday that it's launched early stage clinical trials of an HIV mRNA vaccine. Let me repeat myself: HIV mRNA vaccine, which means if this works. And this is good. We have a vaccine. We will have a vaccine for HIV. That's something... going to be fucking in the street. Yeah. That yep. should have been something. This is something that really should have been done in the 80s or 90s. I'm glad it's here. I'm glad it's on its way. But fuck Ronald Reagan for, for pushing it back this far. Yes, um, yeah. But the specific mRNA thing, that's a relatively newer development, isn't it? My understanding, which is very, very small. Uh, well, let's let's look at the article. Uh, the biotechnology company has teamed up with the nonprofit International AIDS Vaccine Initiative to develop the shot, which uses the same technology as Moderna's successful COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, the first participants in the Phase 1 trial were given doses at George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences in Washington, D.C., according to a company statement. We are tremendously excited to be advancing this new direction in HIV vaccine design with Moderna's mRNA platform. Dr. Mike, Mark, I say Mike, Mark Feinberg, president and CEO of IAVI, IAVI said in a statement, uh, the search for an HIV vaccine has been long and challenging, and having new tools in terms of immunogens and platforms could be the key to making rapid progress towards an urgently needed effective HIV vaccine. Again, and and yeah, they're using the they're basically building off of what they've developed for COVID, which is great. Um, you yeah. know, the, the mRNA, mRNA. I was my my brain is wanting yeah. to reverse those two letters for some reason. Um, <laughs> You know, and and there's the, the, the major part of me, and I think that's all of us here. We I could say for all of us that yes, this is a very good thing. This this is this is awesome. So so that is great. The other part of me is like we could have had something like this in the eighties. With or without mm. the current MRNA stuff for that, that COVID brought. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with or without that. And, and yes, there were some, you know, probably by the late 90s, there were some stride, you know, steps being taken towards it with, with like, medicines that one could take if they, if they develop HIV or what have you. Um, I say mm. develop, catch, you get the idea. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, but it's like, we could have been so much further if we didn't have people like Ronald Reagan and the religious right just writing this off as... The gay disease, quote unquote. I don't know if that's their exact wording, but we're going to run with that. You yeah. know, <laughs> if we didn't have people like them, and it's people like that who are still in power now, but I'm, I'm, that, that's going to send me off on a tangent. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. To Ronald Reagan, I would love to just, like, if, if there is a hell, I hope Ronald Reagan 
is there, and he is shown this day. Days like this, where people with HIV can have a chance to to deal with it, live with it. I, I don't know if it's going to, like, you know, totally destroy it, or at the very least keep it from affecting you. But I want to show him this, because I, I feel like I could be wrong, I could be misremembering, but I have a feeling he was one of those people who was laughing at, at the people dying from HIV because they weren't, you know, they were, quote-unquote, undesirables, you know? So, you know, people like him who are currently in hell, if there is one, I want to show the moments like this. And I want to say, despite your fucking hatred, and despite everything you did to keep people from fighting this, we are mm-hmm. going, we are one step closer to winning. So, exactly. I'd throw a bitch in at the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're one step closer to winning, you fucking crusty ass, failed acting, wrinkled dead cunt. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I don't know which you, I don't know which accent I was going for, but it fucking fit. I don't know if I was going Scottish or Irish there. I don't care. <laughs> it's just. It didn't it, sound like any Scottish accent I can do. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> but either way, either way, either way, saying the word "cunt" in that accent is is so much better. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Nearly 38 million people worldwide, including about 1.3 million in the U.S., are living with HIV or human human immunodeficiency virus, which can lead to the potentially fatal disease AIDS. Being diagnosed with HIV was once considered a death sentence. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, During the height of the U.S. AIDS epidemic in the mid-90s, more than 50,000 deaths occurred every year, according to the CDC. Uh, Today, HIV is much more manageable with medications that can reduce viral loads to undetectable so the virus can't be transmitted, as well as pills that can be taken to prevent infecting those who are HIV negative. But despite decades of research, no vaccine has ever been developed. Several candidates have entered clinical trials but failed in later stages. The new vaccine uses mRNA, or messenger RNA, which teaches the body cells how to make proteins that trigger immune responses. Uh, researchers have developed not only a primary vaccine, but also a booster to deliver HIV immunogens, molecules that elicit an immune response via mRNA. The hope is this process can in- in- induce specific white blood cells, B cells in particular, which can then turn into what are known as broadly neutralizing antibodies that can neutralize the virus. According to the statement, phase one of the trial will enroll 56 healthy HIV-negative adult participants at GWU and three additional sites, Hope Clinic of Emory Vaccine Center in Atlanta, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, and the University of Texas Health Health Science Center in San Antonio. Uh, Of of the volunteers, 48 will receive one or two doses of the MRA vaccine, and 32 will also receive the booster. The remaining eight will receive just the booster. The research will then monitor for safety and efficacy of the new vaccine for up to six months after participants receive their final dose. Um, yeah, mm. that, that's great. Again, to, to, to reiterate, I am glad we are at this point. I wish we could have made it here a lot sooner, but I'm glad we are here nonetheless. So, so this, with the possibility of having a vaccine against HIV... You could probably give to people. Hell, you could probably give it to people. I I I, I want to say you could give it to kids, but it's like, I mean, there are only two major ways to get HIV. But then again, if they have open cuts, open sores, and blood ends up mingling mm-hmm. there, or I don't know if kids still do like the whole blood brothers thing where you like you prick your finger, your buddy pricks their finger, and then you like you know like press the fingers together that sort of thing. I I want to say no, but kids are stupid. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that right there, because HIV is not just spread through sex either, you know, you know, dirty needles, that sort of thing. So, so I would say, yeah, this would be one you would want to give, give the kids at the first opportunity um, to protect them from that. Because, you know, even if they never have sex, it would be good to have that because some, you know, some freak chance accident would be like, oh, hey, wait, suddenly HIV and we don't want that. (laughs) That's one of the suddenlies you don't want. Among other sudden things you don't want. But, but yeah. It's like, it's like yes, go for it. Um, there is a kind of fun aspect to this as well, which is um, 
because of the uh, money she donated um, initially, and I think she went on record and said she didn't know exactly what it was doing, but Dolly Parton has invested quite a lot in Moderna, and she's credited with helping um, the development of the COVID vaccine. So Dolly Parton's now helping fight AIDS. That's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> like she's, she's another one of those. I'm not a big fan of country music. Never really been, you know, so I'm not about to go listen to her music, but Dolly Parton, the person, hell yeah. Get it. Hell yeah. I mean, Jolene's still a banger. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Nine to five, five saving the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, 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 it is, it is a good, it is a, a, a big good. Uh, big, big yay on the Yepa scale. Yes. Uh, <laughs> any of y'all got some other thoughts before going on to another article or? Yeah. It's good. It's cool. Yay. Yep. This is amazing. It is. Yeah. But, It'll probably uh... be more effective than the uh, uh, f- famously uh, over the top campaign we had over here back during the 90s. Hmm. That. Um, I don't. Do you remember those Michelle's? Those TV ads they used to run the flipping big oh. tombstone of age on carved on it. Yeah, the death sentence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, some of our um, PSAs are kind of dramatic anyway. Like, I've got um, a DVD that's just called Charlie Says, and it's like a whole compilation of like oh, the six God, or seven those days. bloody things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie was this orange cat, and every time the kid said he was about to do something stupid, Charlie would like meow at him and tell him not to. And the advice wasn't bad, but the adverts themselves were so silly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it's an entire like DVD. Had mage. <laughs> <laughs> he did. That was the mangiest looking cat I've ever seen. <laughs> he was not animated well. <laughs> oh no. <Lord. laughs> Oh. Seriously, look up Charlie says on, on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find some. See if I They're can find amazing. to put in the green room to show them. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Becky, so... Tifa. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Sharing is caring. <laughs> ah, there, there's a mangy looking thing. Yes. So now I'll just save this and bang this into the green room. Yeah. My love language is oh. showing people I care about really horrific things. <laughs> and that is indeed horrific. Mommy <laughs> oh. says, if you're going to go out, then let mommy and daddy know where you're going and when you'll be back. That's all well and good, but you look like you look like animated <laughs> literal cat shit. I mean, we are talking like... <sighs> I want to say even like early days of animation, but they they did have a shoestring budget. It was like, oh, it's like it's like oh, scrapbook stuff. But yeah, yeah, fair, fair. But um. yeah, it's still kind of <laughs> terrific. <laughs> uh, are we all ready to move on to the next one? Or oh, I want I had oh. something to say. Oh, um, right, right. Sorry, T- oh, sorry, Skull. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, well. Yes, it's amazing, but you know, I really hope that uh, that it does. They don't do this fucking capitalistic for-profit bullshit where they're not gonna Ugh. distribute the vaccine to you know other countries because you know the entire continent of Africa really needs this vaccine. Oh like, yeah, uh... yeah. I think I think I think companies were pulling that with the COVID vaccine too. Yes. Oh yeah, they yeah. were. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's like, hey, mm. hey, hey, fuck your money. You've got enough people. You got Dolly Parton behind you. You got fuck you got fuck you Dolly Parton money. You yes. don't need the extra yeah. money. Alright? Just just distribute it out. Yeah. And I my understanding isn't even a serious distribution issue. They just need to release the patents and let other people make it. So they they don't even have to front the money. There you go. Yep. 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 Yeah, it's like, come on, y'all. <sighs> Trust me, financially, you guys will be fine. You got, again, you got that fuck you Dolly Parton money. <laughs> uh, or is it Dolly Parton fuck you money? I don't I don't know. But, yeah. you know, it's you're going to be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. So, step forward. Let's hope they don't cock it up. Yep. Uh, Phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, 
minute. So, Ricky, you said you had something uh, while we were off mic. Yes, I'll just put this up in uh, the green room as well, and you guys can follow along. All right. This happened earlier this month, but I only just came across it recently. Mm-hmm. All right, let's um, see. This was during the Black Lives Matter protests we had over here. Yeah. Um, the uh, a statue was uh, pulled down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Edward Colston. Uh, he was basically a <laughs> slave trader. I mean, he, what he call him what he was. He was a slave trader, ah. but he was also um, he was also kind of one of these guys who put a lot of money into one of the local towns, so they put up a statue of him. Ah, so a complicated which, one. Complicated yeah. one, and he got he got he got yanked down during the um, Black Lives Matter protest. And four and three men and a woman were charged with it. Well, they ended up getting acquitted, thankfully. Yay! On the the grounds they had a lawful excuse. Yeah? Uh, Yeah, which I absolutely agree with. Uh, This has pissed off the Conservative government, as you can well imagine. Yeah. Oh, always fun. Yeah. Because they are currently trying to push through a bill um, that would increase the maximum sentence to 10 years imprisonment regardless of the cost of damage for something like mm. this taking into well according to Grant Sharp as it be, would close a potential loophole that limits prosecutions of people who damage memorials by taking into consideration wider emotional distress wow by such actions what the fuck okay you know I'll, 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 I will be I will be completely honest if like if somebody came in and just like torched this house and everything was 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 like gone all right you know mm. you know that would cause a lot of emotional distress because there's a lot of stuff here and I don't I don't mean just like the computers and, and the stuff I use to make this podcast I mean I have gifts and artwork from Mel from Becky from from my friend Naomi she I've got some of her work around here too. I've got gifts from just like people that I care about and love and mm-hmm. and mementos and everything and and those are well some of them are technically replaceable cuz well you know they're they're like mm. pixel b art and everything but the point is they're still gifts from yeah from people I care about so it, it's yep. it's a thing there so yeah that would cause emotional wire to distress I would call for them to I would call for them to replace everything that can be replaced and that's a few thousand dollars minimum, because this yeah. computer alone mm. is like eleven, twelve hundred dollars. You know, so it's like, yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna, you know, you know, you're gonna need to replace that. And yes, like like I did mention, a lot of the stuff that I do have from Mel is technically replaceable because they can always be remade. Hell, if I wanted to, I could probably remake a couple of them myself, if I really wanted yeah. to. I'm not going to, but I could. But the whole point of the matter is it's not that it's it's not that it's whether or not it's replaceable, it's the sentimental value. But yeah. you know, if I have Mel replace them, I wanna make sure she has paid her money for it, even if even though some of these were legit gifts to me. Mm. So, you know. I, I would pay her for that time. For a replacement. So what was the loophole? What was the thing they that, got off on? Uh well, what they got off on was the jury be- uh, accepted their argument that um, they had a legitimate excuse because of um, the fact this was a, a slave trader, so was also causing distress to have this someone who was, uh, you know, made his money on slave trade and being glorified in this yeah. respect. Uh, I'll come back I... to that as well. Cause that, that, sorry, Michelle, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, because isn't this the statue that the local people themselves have been, like, trying to get legitimately taken yes, down? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. But yeah, it, there's, I'll come back to what you just said before, Michelle, about the uh, loophole. They've actually, yeah. uh, as a, a legal expert has pointed out, this uh, verdict has actually shot the government in the foot. Always <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's> right. <laughs> because if they increase the maximum sentence to 10 years... That means mm-hmm. any prosecution has to go before a jury. Oh. Not a magistrate's. Oh. And as he point as he pointed out, 
if the Colston defendants had been tried before a magistrate, they probably would have been convicted. In electing to trial by, by a jury, they secured an acquittal and set a legal precedent. <laughs> oh. Right. So even if they get this through for t with a 10-year sentence, the legal precedent is this is a viable excuse or viable <laughs> defense. Yeah. Oh. So basically, they have basically been shot in the foot even before they get this in, in even get to discuss this in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> basically, if they try to uh, push this through and everybody goes to court, we're taking down like a, a, a let's say a, another slave trader statue. They mm. can say the, the defense lawyers can cite this case and say here is the legal precedent. There you and go. they cannot force them now to go to a magistrate. It has yeah. to go to the jury because nice. it's a, because it's a, 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 a custodial sentence. Oh damn! Yeah. So they, yeah. And the other funny thing is, again, perfect example of the right wing, we're the law and order side, not understanding the law. Yeah. Robert Buckland, Tory MP and former Justice Secretary, said, I think any watching these scenes cannot fail to be disturbed, at the very least appalled by what has transpired here. Mm. I don't mm. think we want to see our, court, our Crown Court become political playgrounds. They're not places for politics, they're places for law to be applied and for evidence to be assessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Here's the problem with that statement. Thanks to um, what's it called? Let me just look this up because I actually had this ready. Yeah. Regina versus Randall and Potter, 1991. Wow. Which was a case, which was the case of two men who were accused of helping in the escape of George Blake, the Soviet spy. Hmm. They were acquitted mm -hmm. because the jury. In spite of the evidence, the jury accepted their plea that they had acted in what they felt was the right manner to do at the time, and also because it was revealed, it was basically proved in court, the authorities had known about these two men for decades and had just chosen to go after them at this point because they had written a book about it and kind of embarrassed the establishment. Oof. Mm. In the wake of this, the government at the time tried to push forward a thing to say that the a jury could not find uh, someone not guilty even if um, in, in regard disregarding the evidence basically yeah mm. this was then struck down by the law lords saying uh, it is wholly unacceptable and a serious misreading of the function of the jury the right to return a perverse verdict in defiance of the law or even the evidence is an important safeguard against unjust laws oppressive prosecution or harsh sentences so huh. what he is saying it's wrong. In our, in the British legal system, the jury is legally allowed to disregard the evidence. Wow. And make a, a judgment on moral grounds. Huh. So. So again, I. Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. So basically, they could look at the, the the pulling downs of these statues, and say. Yeah, we don't care what the evidence says. They were a piece of shit. They didn't need to be honored. So fuck you. They're, they're, we're letting them go. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the jury is legally... It's it's what it's what's known as a perverse jury. Huh. So, yeah. The, the former Justice Secretary apparently was not aware of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got briefly reminded of that um, culture sector lady who didn't know how the Channel 4 was funded. Yes. That was, yes. That was embarrassing. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was wonderful. I think the other one that springs to mind is when Petit, Petit Patel was on uh, Question Time a couple of years ago and the uh. question of the death sentence came up. Yeah. And uh. they... I, they, I, what was it? They read out a list, or Ian Hislop, I think, read out a list of people who had been wrongly convicted post yeah. the death sentence. Huh. He wasn't mm. stating opinion; he was just stating a fact. Right. That these people yeah. were convicted of murder wrongly and would have been hanged. Mm. That is what he said. 
They turned to Petit Patel and she said, I disagree with that opinion. Uh, that, 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 but, that, that's, that's, but this, not, you, do you not know what fact and opinion are? Uh... Like, uh, 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 uh. And Did he tear a new one? Oh, you should, yeah, you should have seen the look Hislop gave her before saying, yeah, that was an opinion. That was just, a, that was just, me, <laughs> that, was, that was just me reading out some facts. Oh, so yeah. So on that note, let's go to our, our, our final article. You know, speaking of, speaking of people who really think the courts would work for them even when they don't, uh, Billy Mitchell, uh, he, he's, he's, he's been featured in an article on Nerf Wire. Now, I want to say this before we get into it. This is clearly a joke site, not meant to be taken as fact or seriously, but, you know, because they have, they have um, articles titled such as Top five gamer snacks to make you feel really bloated and tired halfway through raid. Or Jack Black hanging around Double Fine Office casually pitching Brutal Legend 2. Um, or Amazing, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can make the animals fight to the death. Something obviously not true. And one of my favorites out of this bunch, Nintendo Switch doesn't mind being either top or bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I it. Uh, yes but this article that, 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 that we're going to be looking at again I want to remind you guys this is not this is not a serious thing this is this is a bit bit of haha uh, could he be any worse reports indicate Billy Mitchell brings ditch weed to the party and there's our title right there that's why the title is there <laughs> just when you thought that the cheating hot sauce slinging hair dying antagonist of video gaming could get any worse Nerfwire has just received a report that Billy Mitchell consistently brings ditch weed to the party our sources tell us that at every single get together soiree or hoot nanny Mitchell attends he brings the filthiest, <laughs> filthiest of mids are we sure this is even weed said Steve Weeby Weeby, I think is how it's pronounced. While looking at the gross brown, somehow dry and damp at the same time, ganja Mitchell brought to the party. It smells like fertilizer. Weed is supposed to stink, but not like this. I suppose I might be able to get high if I smoke a whole lot of it. Billy probably swapped out someone's primo kush for this ditch weed. We know he's good at doing that kind of shit. For legal purposes, I'd like to disclaim that I do not say this in relation to any current or past allegations against Mitchell. Yeah, because Billy Mitchell is definitely very, very lawsuit happy because I actually did the thing, even though there's proof that you actually didn't do the thing. Uh, uh, yeah. So while Mitchell brought only the brownest nug clumps you ever saw, quote unquote, he made a point to smoke tremendous amounts of other people's chronic while insisting that his shit would get people higher than the Twin Galaxies. Ah, uh, I get that reference. Uh, um, but yeah, that, 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 that's saying something. Trust me, it's the best, said professional liar and charlatan Billy Mitchell as he packed a bowl full of someone else's OG loud. I like to put a little bit of my terrible hot sauce on there too because it really brings out the flavor in my weed. Where did I buy it? I got a great deal, an ounce for 65 bucks. Can you believe it? I knew I had to roll up to Weebies with this shit for, for the weekly smoke fest. Show everyone what real giggle bush looks like. I'm doing really doing everyone else a favor by smoking this garbage and leaving the good stuff I brought for them. Soon I'll... Unfortunately, Michael Mitchell was cut off by another party goer vomiting after trying to use Mitchell's dirt weed hybrid in a gravity bong, at which point Mitchell realized we weren't making a documentary and walked away. <laughs> oh, the, oh god. So, the funny thing that somebody has done with like some AVG, AVGN videos, there was one point where uh, uh, the nerd had like the Billy Mitchell's hot sauce on there. I think it was before people realize what a piece of shit Billy Mitchell is. And so he was doing that for like one, I think it was like his Transformers review or something. And he was going to drink that to like make himself be a better gamer. Somebody took that moment and they took a moment from one of his earlier ones where he had to use a game genie to just to get to show more of the game to review it. So you have, yep, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. You know, to do the Billy Mitchell hot sauce thing. Here's what we're going to do. That's right. We're going to cheat. <laughs> it's like, Oh, yeah. At press time, Twin Galaxies officials were awarding Mitchell the superlative of skunkiest hooter at the party, possibly as a result of a hushed but serious conversation be had between Mitchell, Twin Galaxies, and a legal representative that Mitchell had insisted was just his friend. 
Mitchell was not available for a comment as he was traveling out of town to Little Rock, Arkansas, to procure what the experts call some seriously bunk green. I should also note that Mitchell is from Florida. I want to say he is from Central Florida, so if so, you know, so any 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 kind of stuff he could get down there probably would either a come from my uncle or b come from Lake County, Florida, which is the meth county capital of Florida. <laughs> And I say this also knowing that, yeah, this article is just a big joke and just a big dunk on <laughs> Billy Mitchell because fuck that guy. Yeah. Fuck him. Oh, my God. It's like, you were caught cheating. <clears throat> Deal. Fucking Dream dealt with it better than you do, dude. And for those who don't know, Dream, he's one of those Minecraft tubers that apparently has a cult following. Very, very close mm -hmm. to actual cult. From what I've seen. From what I've seen. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. But he he was caught cheating in a Minecraft run. Um, at first he was like, no, I didn't do it. And he's like, well, maybe I did do it. And it turns out there was like some behind the scenes things he forgot to take off when he did his Minecraft speed run. Um, oops. So yeah. so he cheated, but by accident. But you know what? He's like, hey, you know what? Whatever. You know, he didn't yeah, start a fucking real. lawsuit with people like fucking uh, Carl Jobs. You know, he didn't start. He didn't, you know, for 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 telling people about it you know you know because i think that's something billy mitchell did he went after carl jobs for just reporting the facts yeah and 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 if and if at any point billy mitchell hears this and he decides he wants to come after me i'll be like look dude you save your lawsuits come up here to the panhandle come to the come to the taint you know where that is come up here we'll go we'll go down to the beach out down there at panama city beach We'll, we'll strip down to nothing but our underwear. We're, we're going to blind some people. That's okay. And then we'll just duke it out. We will duke it out. That, 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 mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, that's the thing. You want to come at me? You'll come at me. We'll, we're going to duke it out. You know, but with knowing Billy Mitchell, he'd probably cheat at that too. <laughs> uh, bear in mind, none of that was scripted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I can improv. Sometimes, uh, I've always considered improv to be my weakest thing. But yeah, mm. I, I assume everybody has the same thoughts on Billy Mitchell. Fuck him, right? Yeah, fuck this well, dude. I don't think I necessarily have the same thoughts. Um, Ricky, does Billy Mitchell keep every time you hear it? Do you keep thinking of an EastEnders character? Like, yes. Not a specific character, but the, the name. The Mitchell Brothers, yes. <laughs> I, ha I haven't watched Stenders in a long time, not properly. Um, but yeah, it just sounds like, right, Billy Mitchell, you right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> oh, Lord, speaking of... So... <sighs> but it... Sorry. Um, but it does kind of seg quite cute, uh, nicely into the little fun story that I wanted to tell, which is... Not like a big news story, but I was uh, watching because I, I mentioned before I watch Point Crow just just for fun. Yeah, he's a speedrunner. Does usually does Zelda stuff. Um, but I saw a video and I'm like, all right, and it was basically him and another speedrunner whose name I've forgotten, uh, and they were speedrunning Wikipedia. <laughs> How do you? Do and that? I was like, ah, uh, uh, okay. I was like, all right, what, what's, what's going on? And well, what it actually was, it actually is kind of looks like a fun game. Is they were both on stream and they had their audiences pick a start article, pick an ending article, and then like they set some parameters, like so you can't use like the links at the bottom or stuff like that. They, they agreed some rules, and they basically had to go from article A to article B in as few clicks, like the quickest time possible. So they picked two random articles, here's a start, here's a finish, now speed run to get through Wikipedia. <laughs> it's actually, it was pretty fun! Kind of like the so, internet version of, seven, of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. There you go. Uh, uh, Kevin Bacon is not the centre of the universe. My argument is the Friends cast are the, the, uh, the centre of the universe. Because you pick a name and I could probably connect it and not using the, the principal actors. Hmm. Not using the, the main six actors, I can probably connect to another actor with one connection. 
By the time you get out to six degrees, they are the center of the web. There you go. Uh, at this point, you'll probably do it with multiple people at this point, not just Kevin Bacon. Uh, yeah. That'd be, that'd be yeah. kind of cool, though. Although, you that, know, that makes of, sense. Oh, Sorry, no, I was sticking to Kevin Bacon for just a second. He did a TED Talk um, about the uh, about it all and like talking about the, the game and everything. Mm -hmm. And he said it basically inspired him and he uh, created a charity foundation because of like, the idea of this connectivity thing kind of inspired him. Sweet. And he just says, like, this is like a really cool guy. I mean, you can probably find it if you just like do TED Talk Kevin Bacon, you'll find it. It was like, oh man, that's so cool. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what it is. I'm sure it's like it's. Um, I said uh, I can't remember if it's like for like homeless people, children, a disease, or something like that. Because I can't remember the the main crux of the uh, what the charity is helping. Yeah. But he set up a charity inspired by a dumb game people made about him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> that's 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 like oh, mad respect to Kevin Bacon. Because oh, before yeah. I just thought oh. He's a he's an actor I've heard of that I've enjoyed what I've seen, but I hadn't really thought much of him before that. Mm -hmm. Like what beyond that? But after seeing that, I was like, dude, I like you now. Yeah. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's good people. Yeah. Don't prove good me people. wrong, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, speaking of speaking of like uh, names that make you think of characters off of soap operas, there is there is a reviewer <laughs> whose name is Luke Spencer. You know, he does rock reviews mm -hmm. and all that good shit. There's also a character on General Hospital who was <coughs> recently killed off screen with the same name. <laughs> so it's it's really fun when I'm talking with my friends and I'm talking and I'm talking General Hospital and stuff, and I talk about oh yeah Luke Spencer he, he died and the people are like what the hell, and then of course there led to this one awesome really really fun scene, like it, uh, you know, like uh, one of Luke's best friends one of Luke's best enemies or worst enemies comes into walk into you know go into a bar together. And they're about to start, be, you know, they're about to start fighting because, because the enemy came into the other dude's bar. He's like, "You came into my bar, and you disrespect mm -hmm. my friend. I'm gonna kick your ass. Fuck you." Yeah. Oh yeah, fuck you. And then another dude comes in, somebody who Luke, who Luke had helped um, beat long damn time ago, long time enemy of Luke's. He came mm -hmm. in, and he's like, "Oh, smashing good show." Uh, these you two we, we have the mobster and the ambulance chaser are about to go at it i believe old luke would love a fight like this and <laughs> both of the other two look at each other look at him and they're both like you know what fuck this guy in particular we're gonna tag team you <laughs> cue the brawl <laughs> sadly the brawl itself had to be off screen but <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was so great especially if you, especially if you're invested enough and know the show's history enough, it's like, oh, fuck me. That is yeah. awesome. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the poor police commissioner is there, too, and he's just like, oh, blimey. Uh... <laughs> Fucking hell, we're just trying to go to a memorial! Or however he talks. And, and yeah, I did, except for, except for one, I did try to keep the accents close to the actual characters. So there is actually one who sounds very much like this. And then you've got the Aussie who sounds more like this. Oh, yeah. Australian? That's what you were doing? Yeah. Yeah, again, <laughs> that's why I also qualify it with however they talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it, it's, it, it's gotten me back into the show again. So if, if enough time passes and, and no other, other driving job opportunities pop up or whatever, I might, I might, I might try and restart that one too. Uh, yeah. So that, because that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. Um, any? Do we have any closing thoughts before we get out of here? We'll start with uh, Scully on this one. Man, <laughs> Billy Mitchell fucking would do that shit. With the fucking weed. <laughs> he probably, he probably, you know, bring water down Bud Light too. Oh, not just Bud Light, but watered down Bud Light. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> I don't even drink this shit, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might as well be drinking piss at that point. Yeah. Uh, I like Budweiser. Yeah. Although yeah. Budweiser's better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, to each their uh, own, right? Yeah. 
Uh, uh, Ricky, Michelle, any final thoughts? I, I really not invested in this guy. I he, he cheated. He didn't take the L, and the article. I mean, the thing is, and um, like over the last few years, I think since twenty sixteen, mm-hmm. like with Brexit, with Trump, uh, parody's dead. Like, does the onion even exist anymore? They've just given up. <laughs> like, we can't. We, we can't beat. We can't beat reality anymore. We're done. We're done. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to do, but I think this this site, I, I, from what it looks like, it is typically based around gaming. So. So yeah, they, they got a little bit of leeway on that one, at least. So, uh, yeah. Again, I mean, the switch, the, you know, jokes write themselves sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I love my switch, but oh god, I put it on the other day. I'm not, I'm not feeling gaming at the moment, you know. But I've, there's a, a game that I want that I've got on my wish list. And I'm waiting for it to go back on sale, and I just went in to check that. And the drift was all over the freaking place. I couldn't, Oof. could barely control it. It was terrible. Yeah. So I do need new controllers. Yeah, I know there is um, a way you should be able to fix it at home, like like I've your tried. own things. Uh, I don't remember where the video is though, because it, it, I've it, seen several videos. Of yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've even tried just sending them back off to Nintendo. And they just sent it back like, "Hey, no, it's actually fine. What the fuck's wrong with you?" Like, which wasn't even an option in Europe. Oh, that's right. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm, damn it. Like making an option everywhere, guys. Come on. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, any <sighs> any final thoughts, Ricky? Uh, just this is a prime example of when you lose, take the L with grace. Or this is the kind of shit you are gonna have to deal with for the rest of your existence. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything lasts for me, isn't it? Yep. It's forever. Yep. Uh, and and like I said, Billy Mitchell, if you hear this and you decide you, you did get all pissy and upset, hey, I'm up here in the Panhandle. Come on. You know, beach. Mm-hmm. Nothing I don't wear. To, we'll duke it out. Somebody will be blinded. Somebody will be aroused by it. Either way, you know. You know, again, you'll probably cheat, but, you know, we expect that. Uh so yeah, with that we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, and all else, you know, as long as everything goes fine, we'll be you have another show in a couple of weeks. That'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I will be again. I, I'm I'm taking up the streaming thing again until something comes along or until something takes off on the streaming front. Well, if it takes off yep. on the streaming front, I think I'll keep doing it. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, that'll be. I'll be uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, if it's a speed run night, it may run a little short, considering the game I'm speed running takes about an hour and a half per run. Uh, and if I do two full speed runs, they'll leave just an hour left. So, um, so it's yeah. like yeah, but uh, you know, it just depends on what I'm running that night. I do want to get Pokemon Legends Arceus and maybe start streaming some of that. Maybe. I haven't been really consistent about seeing new games through when I start streaming them because I get so into them. It's like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep playing it off stream. And, and, and <laughs> suddenly I'm done with Metroid with uh, Metroid Dread 100% first time through after, you know, one stream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> admittedly, I did use a guide to get to get the full 100%, but, you know, hey. Yeah, I usually find that for collectibles or, like, the bits and pieces that you easily miss. Yeah, definitely. Like, or if I've been like stuck on a particular area or a puzzle for at least an hour or so, and I'm just like getting frustrated. Yeah. Know. I mean, I, I don't sit there with it open. Yeah, I mean, it's it's what they're there for. It's what yeah. they're there for. They try to help, but um, but yeah, yeah. Normally, I would already have Legends Arceus, but I had to get rid of that pre-order because money is literally, really, really, really tight. And the one trucking company that I was hopefully going to drive with, but I couldn't do it because. Uh, yeah, one one little fluke in traffic kind of kind of cost it of me, but um, but you know yeah. they're supposed to be sending a check and it hasn't arrived yet. Oof. Now I don't know if it's them or if it's because of the mail because I have been getting things for whatever health insurance they were going to sign me up under. Yeah, I've been getting that. It's not it's no use to me, but I've been getting it. <laughs> but you know, so I am tentatively saying it's the mail's fault. But if, if 
If I don't hear from them within the next week, they're they're going to be getting a call from me. Which, why send a paper check? I had to give you my banking information anyway for the direct deposit. You still have that on file. But, yeah, that's, that's a nitpick. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, like I said, streaming Monday, uh, not Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 9 Central. It'll be all good. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Michelle, where could we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on, on my link tree, uh, link tr dot e e slash phoenix eleven p h e o n i x one one. Sweet, uh, Scully, where can we find you? You can find me on link tree, uh, link tr dot e e slash Scully Pendra. Sweet, and Ricky, how about you? And you can find me on fanfiction dot net. Sweet, uh, what what name under that? Uh, Ricky the Goblin Master. Sweet. Uh, and, we, and of course, we, we do have everybody's things in the doobly-doo, but some people are listening to it in a car. Uh, yeah. Which... Also, the, the doobly-doo's moved. That really threw me off. I was looking at a channel, and it was like, I was trying to look up some extra information and it was what they were talking about, and it's it's on the side now. It's not on the down below. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Wait, that's how it used to be in the old days of YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, but I went to click. I went click more. Like, why is it not? Is it something wrong? And like, no, it was on the side, side there. That's yeah. weird, because it's still showing on the bottom for me, at least on YouTube. I don't know. Yeah, you'll find the the base information is, but if you try to click uh, the read more, mm -hmm. and maybe it's only like certain or bigger channels, but like the, the read the click the read more puts it on the side, where the chat usually is on the live stream. Huh. Strange. Very yeah. strange. Huh. Really threw me off. I'm like, where's yeah. my Weird. Like, oh, there you are. <laughs> YouTube working on shit that don't need to be worked on, apparently. But anyway. Yep. Uh, that as for me, you can you can find all of my stuff at linktr.ee slash gomer to one double X. That includes the Twitters, that includes the Tumblers, that includes the Twitch, which I was mentioning just a moment ago. All that you can find all those links down in there. Uh including including stuff for like, you know, crowdfunding, you know, Patreon. You know, you can support me there. The link's in there. Um, and, and if and if you're like, hey, you know what? I don't want to necessarily pledge to a Patreon or whatever. Although I've heard that they are talking about, like, um, allowing, like, one-time pledges. You know, like, instead yeah. of, like, a monthly one. of like, okay, I can only afford, like, 20 bucks this month. Here, have 20 bucks. Here you go. And then not have to worry about it. Recurring charges. That, that may be an option as well. Um, cause yeah, we all had to that. take a whole bunch of survey stuff and it's like, they were, they were thinking about getting into NFTs and we're like, no, uh, <laughs> we don't know about that yet, but we'll, we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, but beyond that, you know, I've always, I think my cash app's up there. So, you know, and I, and I think I still have that GoFundMe link from like a couple of months ago. I, I haven't been promoting it. I, I don't know if Nash has switched back to the site when he does his thing on what the fuck is wrong with you. But mm. you know it it's still there. I do accept it there. I'm just I just haven't been pushing it because I said I wouldn't push it as much come January and I haven't. So um, yeah. basically I'm just sticking to my word. <laughs> but the link is still there and it, and last I checked is still active. So every little bit helps um, for bills or for just me getting the hell out of here, whichever works. <laughs> um, depends on how much. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. we are going with that. We are going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Michelle, Skola, Pendra, and Ricky, signing off. Bye. Later. Bye-bye.